CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Dominie of all the devils and demons domiciled at this spot on your dial. Conscience, a wise man said, is that inner voice that warns us someone may be looking. Well, a great many of us would agree that someone is always looking. However, who that someone is and just exactly what he, she, or it may be looking for has always been and will probably always be the most disputatious subject in all the world. Oh, what do you mean? I'm a client of yours. No question about it. You're a signed-up client. Look, I never saw you before in my life. I, I don't even know what business you're in. Oh, I'm in the evil business. The what business? Evil. I produce, distribute, and sell evil. But what has that got to do with me? You made an agreement with me. You asked me to help you achieve a certain goal. Think. Well, that... Oh, that... That was just a, an idle conversation. My dear sir, you do not have idle conversation with a man in my position. I have come to collect. Our mystery drama, Pension Plan was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by Jovan Collections. It was Isaac Walton, of all people, who told us that virtue is its own reward. On the face of it, this is probably true. For what greater recompense is there than the warm glow of soulful satisfaction that is kindled by the knowledge that we have done the right thing? However, while virtue is highly nourishing to the soul, the body also requires sustenance of a less ethereal sort. It's a universal problem, isn't it? Mr. Stanley Haskins is at breakfast. More coffee, Stanley, dear? Uh, yes, thank you. It's uh, a rather pleasant morning. The sky is an electric blue. <laughs> electric blue. <laughs> an unusual phrase, but apt. Mm. <laughs> a change in tactics, I see. Well, whatever do you mean, my dear? Well, you usually grimace at my poor poetic imagery. Oh, now that isn't true, Stanley. And the usual subject has not yet been broached. Nor shall it be, since it is almost time for the bus. Well, it's because I'm reconciled. Reconciled? To what? To an old age of poverty. Oh, Zelda, I'm afraid I don't really know what... You it's... don't understand. Stanley, you do. You do. We shall have nothing... Except our social security. No, Zelda. Oh, please, Stanley, there's no longer need to pretend we have nothing. We have a pension plan. Yes, my dear. Look, I would rather you did not have that patronizing tone in your voice. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe Jessup has assured me that I have a great plan that will be on what he calls Easy Street. That's what Mr. Jessup said. Now, look, don't call him Mr. Jessup. He's Joe. Joe and I went to school together. We've been closer than brothers. And when was the last time that Mr. Jessup was in our home? Oh, come on, Zelda. When was the last time he entertained us in his? Darling, we live in two different worlds, Joe and I. That's true. He's head of the company, and I'm one of 600. But that doesn't mean we still don't feel a closeness. I understand. No, you don't. Now, you're raising your voice, Stanley. How many friends survive from their youth, huh? Very few. I don't see what all this has to do with what we're... Joe doing. and I realize that we're not the same as we were. We have nothing in common socially anymore. We have different uh, tastes, habits, ideas. So we don't pretend things are the same. What are you trying to tell me, Stanley? But we still value our friendship. When it became obvious that Joe Jessup was going to run this company, I went to him and said, Joe, what I really want above all else is 
security when I retire. I know, dear. You told me the story. Yeah, but evidently you weren't listening. And he said to me, Stan, <laughs> he said, Stan, you got it. I got a pension plan for you that's going to put you on easy street. Mm. And what is the plan? I trust Joe. If he said he had something for me, I believe it. Of course, dear. There's that tone in your voice again. Uh, all right, forgive me. Forgive me. I will never reproach you again, Stanley. Really, I won't. Because I love you. Oh, now, dearest. I know that sounded ridiculous. Imagine a woman of over 60 saying, I love you. <laughs> but I had a vision last night. Zelda, I... People have visions. Visions that change the course of their lives. Now, I realize that you'll never get what you deserve in this world. You're not a fighter. And I shouldn't make you miserable. So... I'm going to accept what's going to happen. And somehow we'll manage. Zelda. Zelda. Zelda, I am two weeks away from retirement. Joe has a surprise for me. I tell you, it'll be the most wonderful thing. Joe is a man of his word. Stanley, would you like another cup of coffee? Are you busy, Joe? Oh, it's you, Stanley. Well, uh, I do have... This is, uh, well, this is a very important matter. Cut it right. as short as you can. I've got to go. Oh, yes. 45 minutes. Yes, sir. And it'll take me at least 30 minutes to get there. Oh, no, no, I'll be brief. Now, what's the problem, boy? Oh, no, talking about problems. I come back too fast in my backswing. Oh, well, Joe, it, the it's The basic just that thing I... is I got too much right hand in the swing. <laughs> You play golf, Stanley? Uh, no. But no, no, what I wanted to discuss is, is something very important. Okay, sure. I mean, it's vitally important to me. Ah, something out of kilter in the office, no, Stanley? No, no, no. It doesn't have anything at all to do with the office. Well, then what is it? Well, it's something personal. Personal? Something that I, I simply have to settle, that's all. Now, Stanley, I do have this golf date, and yeah, I don't I want to... I understand that. But why don't we talk about it tomorrow? Well, huh? I, I... Now, where's my calendar? Hmm. The morning's pretty full, but maybe I can fit you in. I got a 10 o'clock that shouldn't yeah, run but, but more Joe, than I... half an hour, and then I got a 10.30, but we can keep him waiting for five minutes. You won't need more than five minutes, will you, Stanley? Well, I have to talk about it now. Well, be in here 10.30 sharp tomorrow morning, but Stanley, I, I... and be on time or you'll lose your five minutes. Now, you haven't touched the roast. Stanley? Hmm? Oh, yes, Jim. You've hardly had a bite to eat. Oh, well, I, I'm not hungry. If you say so. Now, what is that supposed to mean? If I say so. Didn't I just say so? Isn't it clear that I'm not hungry? I'm not hungry. It's three simple words. Nothing subtle, nothing sophisticated. I'm not hungry. Yes, dear. Does a man have to be hungry every night? Now, the one thing you never lost, Stanley, all these years through good times and bad, was your appetite. Now, do you want to tell me what's wrong? <laughs> Nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. Then I'll tell you. You finally gathered up all your courage today, and you confronted Joe Jessup and the bubble burst. What bubble? The dream. This conceit you've been nourishing over the years about a pension plan that Joe had established for you. You found out today it doesn't exist. That is not true. Well, it does exist. But then tell me. Tell me about it. How much do we get? And when? Well, Stanley, we have to be able to plan. What can we afford to do? Oh, my poor darling. Just don't torture yourself. It doesn't matter anymore. But it does. Now, we won't it stop. It matters to me that my wife thinks that I'm a pathetic, deluded fool. No, I never said that. Do you have to say it? I know what you're thinking. But Zelda, he did promise me. How long ago? 20, 25 years? What makes you think he even remembers? Well, we talk about it all the time. How often, Stanley? There is a plan. There has to be. Now, let me tell you this. Joe may be a sharp operator, but one thing, his word. I believe in his word. He never lied to me. Oh, no, no, please, Stanley. No, please, I'm, I'm a little frightened. I have never seen you this, this way. I can prove it. The man is going to keep his promise. All right, all right, of course. Of not course. a gift. It's not some bounty. It's mine by right. Zelda, Zelda, I gave my youth to that company. My creative, 
working life, and I won't be cast aside because the calendar says that I'm 65 years old. Darling, just sit quietly for a minute. I will not wait until tomorrow. (laughs) So, listen, I will tell you. Oh, you know what really happened? I crawled. I crawled into his office today. I was practically on, on my bended knee. Oh, please, Joe, deign to look at me, tolerate my unimportant presence. Now, Stanley, I will not let you talk this way. I'm as good as he is. And if you must know, in many ways, I'm better. Honey, look, let me run you a nice warm bath. You've got to calm yourself. I am calm. Zelda, I am calm, darling. I'm quite calm, thank you. Yes. Well, that's better. (laughs) You had me frightened. Well, I'm about to embark... On the most important errand of my life. Stanley, Stanley, where are you going? And so I must not act out of passion. What are you looking for in that drawer? So I am very calm, very much in command of myself. No, Stanley, don't. But, Zelda, I am entitled to justice. Stanley, please, put that gun away. One way or another. Now, one, uh, where did you go? You must not stand in my way. But Stanley, this isn't you. I know this isn't you. I will get what's mine. Stanley... If you walk out of this house with a gun, I will call the police. The meaning of my whole life depends on this moment. So I warn you, Zelda. If you call the police or if you try to stop me, I will never speak to you again. No, Stanley. Step aside. Step aside. I said step aside. on. Who turned the lights on? I did. Stanley, how did you get in here? I broke one of the back windows. Hey, what are you talking about? You asked me a question, I gave you an answer. What are you doing here? Joe, I came here to talk to you. What makes you think you can break into my apartment What and... made you think that you could treat me like the dirt beneath your feet these past 25 years? No, it's one of those things. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's eating you, Stanley, but go ahead. Get it off your chest. Joe, what happened to us over the years? What happened, Joe? <laughs> you have everything? I have nothing. Stanley, my time is valuable. Get to the point. I'm not jealous of you. But we both started at the same level. You became successful. I lagged behind. Paul, this is a matter of record. I call your attention to a promise that you made to me many years ago. I said, Joe, all I have is the job in the office. I'm not on the production line, so I'm not in the union, and so there's no pension for me. I said, Joe, I think the company owes me a pension plan. <laughs> How many years ago that was. Yes, and I do remember it. I remember as if it were yesterday. I remember you asking. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your answer? What do you mean, do I remember? Sure, I remember. I said to you, Stanley, I got a plan lined up for you that's going to put you on easy street. Joe, we may have gone our separate ways, but friendship is friendship. Your word, Joe, is the rock of Gibraltar. There is a plan for me. Well, sure. When do I start to collect? What are you talking about? When, Joe, when? What do you mean, when? When do you start to collect? you got to be kidding. You've been collecting on that plan for the last 20 years. You know the old story... A man spends his life and his fortune hunting for the secret, the great secret of the universe. Finally, he is directed to an incredibly old, incredibly wise guru. What is he told? Why, simply that he already knows the secret. Very well. But what is the secret? I shall return with the second act in just a few moments. philosopher is a time that must be nourished by the fruits gathered in our youth. Quite true. 
which is why we all try to provide for it. Now our friend Stanley Haskins thought everything was being taken care of, that a plan existed to furnish him with comfort and plenty. Evidently it does. Is it possible that he has been unaware of it? Just tell me, Joe, how much do I get each month the day after I retire? From the company? Of course from the company. What do you think I'm talking about? Oh, you're out of your mind. The day you retire, you get one month's pay and goodbye forever. From the song of the same name. Well, where's my pension? Oh, come on, Stanley. What are you trying to pull? You already collected your pension in spades. What have I got? Don't ask me. How am I supposed to know how much you've socked away? <laughs> I don't think I have a thousand dollars in the world. Oh, 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 you're talking to me, Stanley boy. Look, I put four kids through college. We've had sickness. Did I ever make more than twelve thousand a year, Stanley? No. No, I'm going to keep my temper. I'm going to be very calm. That twelve grand a year was just a license. A license to do what? Steal. Steal. I was the one who fixed it for you. Now, you came to me, as we both remember, and you asked about a pension plan. And I said, sure, Stanley. I'm going to make you office manager. Look, I know all that. Get to the pension plan that you promised me. That was it. What was it? The job. Your job was all the buying for the company, right? Office supplies, oil for the looms, spare parts. You hire maintenance firms to clean the place. You spend maybe half a million dollars a year, no? Look, what does that have to... Even if you stole 5% a year... No! Oh, come on, Stanley. Don't play these games with me. The contract for office supplies alone runs twenty five, thirty thousand 30000 a year. You mean you haven't been making the guy kick back? Who do you think I am, huh? I know who you are. You're a guy like everybody else, which means you're on the take like everybody else. And that's how I gave you your chance to provide for your old age. By stealing from the company, huh? What were you stealing from the company? You were taking yours. So you listen to me. I never took a cent. Five percent is absolutely reasonable. That's about three, four grand a year. Twenty years? You should have sixty, seventy thousand stashed away. That's bad? And who says five? Hey, you could have taken ten. But I told you, I never took a penny. And I tell you, you're a liar. Well... <laughs> One or two of the suppliers would send me a bottle of whiskey for Christmas. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Once the Metropolitan Opera appeared in town, I got free tickets. Okay, Stanley, let's drop it. Uh, and then somebody arranged for me to buy a hi-fi set at wholesale. You're loaded, Stanley, so don't come around whining. Joe, I'm, I, I'm sw I swear to you, I never, Joe. Look, will you look at me? I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe you are. <laughs> so funny. Are you serious? <laughs> what do you think I'm laughing at? I'm laughing at you. A guy sits surrounded by money all day and he never sticks out his hand. And that's funny, huh? It's more than funny. It's pathetic. Stanley, you're 65 years old and you never learned the facts of life. You're a chump, Stanley. A prize chump. And so that was to be my pension plan. I was supposed to steal. Steal is your word. <laughs> all these years I had hoped... And all these years it was there for you to take. And now you you got to... you got to admit it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. What a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. But Joe... Joe, the joke... Is on you, huh? Yep. What do you think you're going to do with that pea shooter? This pea shooter is a 32 caliber pistol. You're going to kill me? Yes. Why? Because of what you did to me. What did I do? You degraded me. You lied to me. You made a fool out of me. You did it to yourself. And that is why I have to kill you. What will you get out of that? Hmm? Well, something that you'll never understand. My self-respect. You won't kill me. You know why? Because killing takes guts. And you don't have any. Oh, I am going to kill you, Joe. You can't. That's been your problem all through life. You can't make up your mind to do something and follow through. Right now, your brain is 
twisting and spinning and exploding. Should I, shouldn't I? But it's murder. Doesn't the commandment say, thou shalt not kill? Don't you take another step. Now look at you. Your hand is shaking. You don't know whether to kill me or kill yourself. You'd like to kill us both, but you don't have the guts. Now, I'm... I'm just going to take the pistol out of your hand. Just relax, nice and easy. There. And don't you ever pull a stunt like that again. Oh, I... What were you trying to prove? That you're an honest, upstanding citizen? That you're better than me? Well, you're not. You're worse. You're a hypocrite. You keep your hands in your pocket because you don't have the guts to take what you want. <laughs> I brought you a cup of tea. Oh, Stanley, you, you've got to have something. Now, if you keep this up, I'll have to call Dr. Kramer. You, you just can't sit here day and night without speaking. Oh. Zelda, I'm no good. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm, I'm nobody. Oh, Stanley, darling, what did he do to you? He stripped me of every bit of self-respect. Oh, darling, it, it can't be what you say it is. You weren't there. It was as if I was an insect and all he had to do was slap at me and I was crushed. I want to kill him. Oh, Stanley, please. You, you, you mustn't even think like that. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, I won't. I don't have the courage. Oh, Stanley, darling, it isn't lack of courage. It's that you have good common sense. Oh. Oh, I feel so helpless and so infinite. What can I do to him? Now, you must forget him. You're finished at the plant. Oh, finished, finished. That's the word. No, no, I meant your working life there has ended. Now, we go on. Darling, we write a new chapter. Uh, will, will you be all right here by yourself? I have to leave for a bit. Where are you going? Uh... It's nothing. It's... I have a part-time selling job, warnings, at a dress shop. Oh, I see. You, you've taken a job. Oh, Stanley, it's, it's something to do. It, it, it keeps me occupied. And we need the money now. You'll be all right, dear, won't you? If I were a real man, I would have provided for our old age. Stanley, darling, you are a man. Now... Why don't you sit in the park and uh, enjoy some fresh air and sunlight? Oh, I see. This is how it's going to be from now on. And I'll be the useless, helpless old man. I'll sit in the park and I'll watch the children play. And... Stanley, please. Now, something's come over you. You're not the same. No, there's no place for me. Darling, it's an expected reaction. Now, you'll get over it. You're just too bright to start feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. Congratulations, Joe. You made it. It's what you always wanted. Couldn't have done it without you, Stanley. You were a big help. <laughs> now that you're the big boss, you can do something for me. Ask, old pal. Just name it. Joe, I need a pension plan. A pension? <laughs> oh, kid, that's 25 years away. Well, that's how I am, Joe. How will I be able to retire? Uh, I got it. Your office manager. Well, what will that do? You do the buying. All the buying. It comes to half a mil a year, right? But I don't understand. Make all the suppliers kick back to you. What? You can sock away a couple of grand, three, four, even five a year. Tax free. But, Joe, that's dishonest. Oh, come on, Stanley. Everybody does it. Everybody doesn't do it. Your suppliers expect it. They're willing to pay it. There are honest people in this world, Joe. Ethical people. Not everybody is willing to sell his soul. 
Oh, what's this about selling your soul? All I'm talking about is a few bucks here and there. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about decay and corruption. A cancer that eats at the soul. You're like the devil himself. That's what you are. The devil. Well, you won't have me. Stanley. You're the devil. Stanley. You can't have me. You can't Stanley. have me. Stanley. Stanley. Uh, uh, it's all right, Stanley. It's all right. Everything's all right. What? Honey, you were having a nightmare. I, I, I was? Every night this month you keep screaming about your soul and, and the devil. Do I? Honey, what do you dream about? Well, I... I don't know. Such a terrible dream. What, what I, can I... I tell I... you that. I, I don't know. I, I, I wake up and it's gone. Well, it's time to get up anyway. Uh... I have to open the store. Yeah, I'll make you breakfast. What are you going to do today? Well, I do every day. I'll sit in the park. One hand washes the other. I won't do it. That's the basic rule for success. The devil. The devil. You talk like the devil. The devil. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming again. I'm dreaming. You have interesting dreams, Mr. Hassel. What? Oh. I uh, couldn't help but overhear. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Well, I... I... You sound like a very troubled person, Mr. Haskins. Yeah, well, I, I, I suppose I am. I... Oh, wait a minute. How, how did you know my name? Oh, I should know it. Indeed, I should. After all, you're one of my clients. Clients? I don't think I ever met you before. That's true. Then how could I be your client? You are, Mr. Haskins. You are. Client? Who are you? My name is, uh, Smith. But what business are you in? I'm in the evil business. <laughs> the what business? You asked me, I told you. The evil business. I manufacture, distribute, and sell evil. Now, look, you, you're crazy, or, or else I'm crazy. Our only competition is good. <laughs> A little pun there. But believe me, since time began, evil has always been where the real money is. Yeah, I, I dare say you're right. Don't humor me. You're not talking to a fool. No, no I, I didn't say that I was. Well, to business then. I'm here to collect. To collect what? What do you think? Your soul. Now, what the devil are you talking about? Speak of the devil. You have unmasked me. <laughs> you are the devil? Guilty as charged. But, but that's the only... And I'm here to collect your soul. No, 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 listen to me. Even if it's, if it's true, even if this crazy thing is true, what, what claim do you have on my soul? Now, my dear Mr. Haskins, we have an agreement. What agreement? A verbal agreement. Yes, my dear Mr. Haskins, a verbal agreement is binding. It was 25 years ago. Oh, I don't remember anything. That's because you don't want to remember, but that's all right. Everybody, <laughs> all my clients tend to forget their uh, obligations. It's only human nature, after all. Yeah. And I pledged my soul, huh? Yes, you did. And what does this mean that you have come to collect it, huh? Well, what do you think it means? Well, I... Well, I, I guess it means that I die. Dying is the human word for it. Hmm. Is there a better word for it? Dying is an accurate description of what happened. You mean that I'm going to die here and now on this park bench? Well, it's as good a place as any. Oh, no. I'm sorry. No, no, I, I don't remember making any agreement. Ah, but you did. Why would I ever make a deal with the devil? Why does anyone make a deal with the devil? But I'm not that kind of a person. I'm sorry, Stanley. You said that we had a verbal agreement. All right. Now, what, what was that agreement? Stanley, if I can refresh your memory, will you acknowledge your debt? If you can prove to me that, that we ever made such an agreement... Of course I can prove it. I can prove it to your entire satisfaction. I can prove it beyond the shadow of a doubt. He's sure of himself, isn't he? But that, of course, is the devil's style. 
Is the man what he claims to be? And if he is, what kind of deal could our absolutely honest and upright Stanley have made with him? We'll have to answer that in Act 3, which I shall deliver in just a few moments. said that even the devil is entitled to a courteous hearing and a fair trial, and we're about to witness one right now. The devil, if he is the devil, has a claim on our friend Stanley Haskins. On honest, ethical Stanley Haskins, you exclaimed, how can this be? Well, we agreed to listen to the devil's side of it and... When did we ever make an agreement? When? Oh, my dear, dear Mr. Haskins. Yes, when? I defy you to produce the proof. When would I ever ask the devil for help? Well, now, how good is your memory? This goes back, uh, 25 years? Yes. You remember? You were having a little argument with your wife. But Zelda, Joe wants us to have dinner with him tonight. I won't go. I, I just can't stand that man. Joe, he's the oldest friend I have. I cannot tolerate the way he patronizes you. Oh, Selga. Now, he pretends to be your great and good friend, but underneath he has nothing but contempt for you. That isn't true. Now, you go to dinner if you like. Selga, and... Joe made reservations at Julietta's, and after all, it is his birthday. Well, you just tell him uh, that I'm not feeling well. Guy Stanley? Thank you, Joe. Hey, say, this must cost at least a dollar. <laughs> a dollar and a half. Ah, cigars, dinner, special wine. <laughs> I hate to think of how much you spent. It's only money. Yeah, but I know how much you're making at Josiah Wilson and Son Fabrics. You know, Stanley, every man has his weakness. With some fellows, it's wine, others, golf, boats, cards, and so forth. Mine is money. I love to spend money. You think I'm crazy? Well, I don't... The trouble is, you have to make a lot to spend a lot. And I know how I can make it by the bucketful. If I could become president of Josiah Wilson and Company. President? Why not? I'm the best salesman they got. And selling's the name of the game, no? It's a sleepy little textile house. But I could turn it into a gold mine. But Joe, how could you ever become president? The old man looks as if he can live forever. And when he goes, he's got five sons, three daughters with husbands, all kinds of nephews, and every one of them is in the business. And that's what's suffocating the company. Oh, oh what I could do with it. I'd give anything to be made president. <laughs> you know something? I'd even sell my soul. Well, that's going to extremes, isn't it? Maybe. But isn't there anything you'd sell your soul for? Well... Uh, well, maybe I would, I, I guess. I, I suppose I would sell my soul for security. Security? Yeah, if I knew that I could always have a job with a, a fairly decent salary. Well, you've got that now. Nobody ever gets fired at Josiah Wilson. Yeah, but I don't have any real security. You see, I don't have a pension. Well, that doesn't sound like much to ask for. Oh, no, it is to me. Especially the pension, because... Well, Joe, you see, it would leave my mind free for other things. Like what? Well, like, uh, well, like poetry. I mean, I, 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 I could write poetry. I could listen to music. Because, well, I wouldn't have to worry about my old age. You'd sell your soul for that? Yeah. Yeah. Now that I think about it, I would. And you did, then and there. Both of you offered your souls on the spot. The offer was accepted. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't realize... What that. did you expect? A burst of thunder, a cloud of smoke, a mist of sulfur? Yeah, but I... You made the offer, my friend. Can you deny it? You said you would sell your soul for security, for a pension plan. But I didn't think anybody would take me seriously. Life is a serious business, my friend. Which is why it must always end in death. But, Mr. Smith... Oh, it's legal. It's legal, Mr. Haskins. You were given a pension plan. Oh, no, I wasn't. And so, I must ask you to come along now. But, but you, you didn't live up to your part of the bargain. I did. I made Joe Jessup president of Josiah Wilson and Company. I urged him to make you office manager so that you could arrange for a pension plan for yourself, didn't I? Oh, no, no, you see. 
There's no way out. No, no, wait. For what? The thing is clear enough, isn't it? Not according to the agreement. I offered my soul for a pension plan. And you got it. No, no, no. I got nothing. I got nothing but the opportunity to create a plan. Ah, same thing. Is it? Is it the same thing legally? We are merely quibbling over words. Well, what is the entire profession of the law if not a quibble over words? The fact is, you offered me your soul for a pension plan, and you did get one. How it was arranged is not germane to the fact. But I didn't get one. You were made office manager. Can you deny it? No, but... Where you had the opportunity to steal enough money to ensure your... I don't have the money. I never took it. Stanley, do not insult my intelligence. Who would refuse the windfall that was placed at your disposal? I did. Impossible. It goes against human nature. Maybe human nature as you see it, Mr. Smith. I never touched a cent I didn't honestly earn. You're lying. You have that money stashed away, out of sight. But I swear to you, I don't have a nickel. You can't hide it. If it's buried in your cellar, locked in a vault, I have my methods. I can find it. Well, you go ahead, Mr. Smith. I can turn the world upside down and inside out, but I can find it. You cannot find what doesn't exist. And when I do, I'll be back here to finalize our agreement. The lights. The lights are on. Who turned on the lights? I did. Oh, no. St. Stanley again. You are no longer employed by Josiah Wilson and Company. And therefore, I cannot see what... Joe. Right you... Joe. I'm here for one reason. To have the last laugh. What? The I last you... laugh. The one who laughs best gets that, doesn't he? Okay, what's the joke? Joe, yesterday was my birthday. He came for me. Hmm? Tomorrow is your birthday. He is coming for you. Who is? Who do you think? The devil. <laughs> so you finally cracked. It was too much for body and soul. He is coming for your soul. Oh, is he? Well, tell me more. Now, you think it's a joke, huh? Well, you won't when I tell you that we made an agreement with him. Oh, sure, sure. Just think back. Twenty-five years. We were celebrating your birthday in Julietta's. And what did you say? You said, I would give anything to be made president of Josiah Wilson and Company. I would even sell my soul. I never said any such thing. But you did. Not me. Think, Joe. Think. Remember that night. That night. I'd give anything to be made president of Josiah Wilson and Company. I'd even sell my soul. <laughs> ah, you remember. Well, Joe, he took you up on it. Oh, who do you think? The devil. Are you crazy? Why am I crazy? Because there's no such thing as the devil. Isn't there? Joe, how... Did you get to be president of Josiah Wilson and Company, huh? By brains and muscle and work and hustle. And look at what had to happen for you to become president, huh? How many people had to pass from the picture? Oh, you're crazy. I know why you say it. You must have me crazy to protect your sanity and your life. Because if I am crazy, there is no devil and there was no bargain. And he will not call for you on your 65th birthday tomorrow morning. But, Joe, am I crazy? How, how could a bargain with the devil? You were willing to do it. In your heart, you were willing to do it. You said we both made a bargain. Oh, we did. I pledged my soul, too. Then we're both in the same boat. I at least got to run for my money. You, you poor sap. What have you got to show for it? My agreement has been canceled. Huh? I am not going. What do you mean? I received nothing of value for my soul. You see, he had you make me office manager so I could collect myself a pension plan. But I didn't do it. Because you were a chump. It only goes to prove, Joe, that the chumps, the saps, the people who play it straight win out in the end. Virtue does have a reward. 
can you contemplate that while you broil in hell? You sold your soul, too. You'll roast with me. Only if there was value received. You know, I, I must say that Mr. Smith, that's the name he uses, is holding my case in abeyance. You, you are. Oh, don't, don't say that I'm crazy. <laughs> yes, he cannot believe that I refuse to steal. And so he is turning the world upside down, trying to find where I hid the money. <laughs> but he won't find it. How can he? I never took any. Who do you think you're kidding? You took. You're like everybody else. You're on the take. Oh, you're becoming hysterical, Joe. You had a chance to steal four or five grand a year and you stole. You just won't believe me. Mr. Smith, the devil himself, has to believe me because he won't be able to find one single cent that I ain't going to burn alone. I know you took the money. And I know where you hid it. The devil will believe me when he won't find the money. Oh, he'll find it. I'll show him where it's hidden. Joe, are you losing your mind? I know where you hid it. And I'll show him exactly where. I'll show him. You have a pension plan. Poor Joe. Poor, poor Joe. Poor Joe. Oh, I can't feel sorry for him, Stanley. Well... We must always speak well of the dead. Very sudden. Yeah. On his birthday. Uh, they think it was a heart attack. Was there any mail? Oh, uh, well, yes, there was a letter for you. Oh? From whom? A uh, bank, hmm. I think. What's it say? I don't know. I didn't open it. Probably an advertisement. Hmm, probably. If only he'd kept his word and given you that pension plan. Darling, we must always reserve judgments on our fellow man. Oh, uh, no one can ever change my mind about Joe Jeffers. Zelda. What? Zelda, look. What? This letter. This letter from the bank. It says, oh, my, I can't believe it. Oh, Stanley. Really? <laughs> Dear Mr. Haskins, this is to inform you that a pension plan has been established in your name at our bank. The principal sum is one hundred. And fifty thousand dollars. Stanley. What, 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 does, what does that mean? It means what it says. Well, I can't believe it. It is it's a trick. Why do you say that? Well, uh, because no, don't laugh at me. I believe that Joe Jessup is a person who belongs to the devil. Oh, you're absolutely right. Now, and this money was is meant as a trap. A snare. Uh, well, we'll never know. Was it meant? To, to do you harm? Zelda, whatever the intention, it can only do us good now. Yes. <laughs> it saved us. Yeah. You can say that again, my darling. And so, what have we proved? Actually, proof is the wrong word. Nothing is ever proved in this uncertain world. All we can do is suggest possibilities. And the basic possibility here is that you can make anyone believe anything. Anything at all. Even that he has sold his soul to the devil. If you hit him at the right time. In the right place. I shall be back shortly. We are now about an hour older than we were when this program began. But are we an hour wiser? Well, what is wisdom? A modest aspect of wisdom, and one that can be achieved by all of us, is to eschew the extravagant statement like, I'd sell my soul if I could. The danger is, we may have made a deal. Our cast included Norman Rose, Ann Petoniak, Leon Janney, and William Whitfield. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.